All right, guys, come to you from a different place in the house this time, right? Uh, basically, I'm here in the bedroom. It's snowing outside. Uh, in the last hour, I think we've got about another two inches, so it's it's probably close to ten inches of snow outside, and it's damn cold and stuff. And uh, I wanted to play around with something I actually saw on YouTube over the summer and stuff, so uh, I figured this would be a good time to kind of test it out. And you know, and I got. Before we get on, I got VHS tapes, comic books, some posters to show. But I made something. I want to see if this thing worked. And we're about four hours into it. And let me show you what it is. Okay, I'm going to go down here, down low. All right. You can laugh if you want. But I just had to know. What we have here, and let me see if I can zoom in on this. What we have here is kind of like a convection heater where I'm at you know usually when it, they're predicting that the snow is going to be wet and heavy and we're going to lose power and last year I ended up uh, sharing a hotel room with a friend and then I ended up getting another hotel room that cost money then I ended up staying with some friends so this year I wanted to see if this would work if the power went out what we have here is we have a bunch of these candles you know that you okay and a uh, metal pan and then I, I had some kind of aerial like I when I take camping I would take it camping and I could put this you know over a campfire and hold things up this is out of my oven and these are two ceramic pots and they've cooled off a whole lot because I just switched candles right but what you do is that you get two ceramic pots this one's hot all right and you put them that one right over the candles and then you use something to stop the hole up and then you'll put this one on top of it and those candles seem to burn right at four hours all right and the thing's cooled off a whole lot now i wanted to play around with it like i said in case the power went out and uh now i'm not saying to go out and get this i just wanted to test it see if the thing would work you know i'd rather spend you know a couple dollars on this than you know on a hotel room and see if this works and it's really odd, man. It's really odd because I was like, oh, this is crap. This ain't working and stuff. And this is a very small bedroom. But it's so cold out there, you can actually feel the cold coming through the wall and through all the windows here. So this place is not well insulated. But the thing about it is that even though it's not toasty in here, there's still a little nip in the air. It's, it's, it's kind of working. It's, key. it's not going to get the room, you know, toasty, warm or anything like that. But if I got under these blankets and had this thing going, and it, it, I think I'd be all right. So it's, it's kind of cool. I can feel the heat coming off of it. And uh, it's got an air pocket in there, you know, where you have the smaller uh, ceramic pot with the tall one in there. And you plug up the hole, it makes a heat. And it actually kind of shoots out there a little bit. And I added a fifth one. They say to just do four. I added five because I wasn't real impressed. But I was sitting here thinking it's not working that well. And then just as soon as I went to switch the candles out and took the thing off, it, you can automatically feel the cold just rushing into the room. So it does something. It kind of makes a little swell of heat here. And you can walk around and it, it's not even heat or anything like that. But like I said, if the power went out, I think I, you know, just get my sleeping back and curl up beside this thing. And it's and it's safe. Man. I mean, you know, it's in a metal pan. I put the aluminum foil down. There's nothing like that. And I'm thinking the aluminum foil is kind of reflecting and you know helping out the directing the heat a little bit. But yeah. Anyway, that's it. Just wanted to show you that. I'm not saying go out and do it. Don't try it. You know, if you don't, you know, anything like that. I'm not praising it. I'm not going to say this is the way to go. But, you know, I'm, I'm a bit more impressed with the results than I thought. So, like I said, it's still nippy in here, but much better than what it was when I started this little experiment. All right. So, now, talking four minutes of talking about that. Here's some stuff I got. VHS hauls. Yeah, and I went into the Goodwill just looking for things like this old ceramic pots and stuff so I didn't have to buy them new or anything, and I'll be named if I didn't find some VHS tapes, right? Real quick, from the early 80s, I think this was like 80, 81, 81, I've heard people praise this movie, but I've never seen it, you know? But uh, it found Outland with Sean Connery, and apparently he is a sheriff on a moon of Jupiter that is a mining colony. And the same guy that uh, worked on Star Wars, one of the guys that worked on Star Wars and Thunderball, uh, did some special effects in this. So I'll probably be, you know, you know, getting ready to watch this here in a little while. We'll start with that one. Uh, from the early 90s, I like the first Gate the horror movie. 
this is a sequel, Gate 2. I'm not expecting too much out of it. And this is from 1980 now. I actually do remember watching this one, and we'll see if it holds up. But uh, Night School, and it says it is Rachel Ward's first movie. Some slasher film there from 1980. Um, this one I'm real curious about. If you liked, um, oh my gosh, what was the movie? What was the movie? <coughs> Reanimator. These are the same people that did Reanimator. This is another H.P. Lovecraft story called From Beyond. And it's about eating brains. So there you go. Yeah, so we'll be real nice to see that. And then this is the one that caught my eye when I walked into the Goodwill. And that's what made me go there and, you know, lecture look through the movies. Because I was going to buy this regardless. This, this cracked me up. And the box is in really good shape. And in my mind, I don't know much about the VHS community and stuff like that. But to me, this is, you know, a collectible. You know, Toxic Avenger. Yes, on VHS. And it's got like a... Uh, just a little ding there with the paper holding up and a little thing at the same side somebody had a good collection of VHS horror movies that they took care of because these are like in really great shape and stuff so this cracks me up Tromaville from Troma Studios Video Treasures but yeah that right there you talk about a cult classic you know the Toxic Avenger the mileage they got out of that just blows my mind and the fact that he's still around I think that movie came out in like 84, 85 all right, so that's going on outside. Anyway, I'll, I'll show you posters here at the end. Anyway, now there's a random act of kindness. There's a guy who's started making some videos, and he's actually talked to me more on the Howler Mouse page on Facebook. And uh, this is he just decided to do this. You know, he he sent me said he had a, a you know he got doubles of this one book. He wanted to send me one. I was like, I can't send you anything. I don't have anything related to trade right now. And he's like, no, don't worry about it. And he sent it to me. He got it here quick. He packed it really well. Uh, I think it only took like maybe two days to get here. And right when I got this out of the mail, the snow started. So he got here just in time. But it's a book from Archaea. Oh, and the guy who did it, uh, I don't know if he wants me to give his first name or not. But uh, his channel is Ronan L.A. Okay. Uh, and I'll put a link in the bottom there, but check his stuff out. He started making videos. He's a real laid-back guy. He shows some stuff, uh, you know, so, you know, thank you very much there, Ronan L.A. But uh, the book he sent was uh, The Hacktivist, and you can't see it, but there's like uh, a picture of a girl on there. Man, I wish you could see it, man, but it's, it's embossed on here. Anyway, this is called The Hacktivist. Ah, oh, you can almost see it, right? But what's interesting about this is I flipped through it a little bit, and this was created by Alyssa Milano. Yep, Tony Danza's TV daughter, Alyssa Milano. Uh, the girl showed her boobies on the vampire, in that vampire movie in the 90s. The girl who was on uh, Charmed, you know. But yeah, The Hacktivist. And uh, it looks pretty good, man. I'll read it and probably talk about it in another video, since this was sent to me. Uh... And, uh, you know, we'll kind of go through it and stuff, all right? I uh, actually paid full price for a comic because I walked in the comic book shop today and he had one copy of this. To rock number one, I'm very excited to get this. And everybody that's read this uh, that I've talked to, the comic shop owner, I saw La Rasa talking about it, uh, and two other people I know read this, and they love it. So I'm, like, really excited. I go way back with To Rock when I was a kid with those little gold key things. I've got a stack of torn up, beat up Dale comics and stuff. Excuse me. And uh, so I'm really excited that he's in there. And the exact words I heard is that they're coming out with uh, Magnus 2, uh, all the gold key characters. And they said that if, they, if Magnus is half as good as Tarok, you know, these books are going to get some attention. All right, I had a buddy come over last night and he had some books. I asked, uh, from what I get, somebody gave him a stack of books or something. I don't know, but he was driving around letting people look at him and he got up there and let me grab a few things so I grabbed all these off of him uh, Aliens Labyrinth uh, number three of four um, you know these are some early Dark Horse books of uh, Alien Aliens Earth War this has awesome Sam Keith art in it I, might, I think I have one, two, and three now I need number four but uh, I think these came out in like 1990 so, yeah, there's another one. Aliens Earth War. Like I said, the art in these are just phenomenal. Um, let's see if I can find something. Oh, oh, oh. 
There we go. There's some alien goodness for you. There we go. So, so I don't know chronologically. It's kind of like he went from um, Sandman, quit over created differences over death, and jumped right on this. <coughs> and then you know, he had some other stuff I got just for the fun of it. Grew number thirteen. Sergio Gana. See, I mean, these these are kind of beat up. Uh, I went back and forth with this one, looking at everything, and uh, I just said, oh, why not? Why not do it? I mean, it's stained. It's a little bit beat up and stuff. But for what I paid for, it's nothing. Uh, number one of three in Transformers the movie adaption. I had no idea they ever made this. I think I have Transformers number one somewhere, the actual one. Uh, number one and four, Transformers the Headmasters. No idea. just want to check it out. The Headmasters. I'm just... It's too easy. Too easy. Not going to say anything. Then I got this. Keep hearing things outside. And I got this because it's Ditko. I had these back in the day when they were coming out. Like, it's Ditko. And then slowly I started realizing how lame this was. And I started cracking up because, um, you know, Speedball is the name of a drug. You know, I mean, there's a, you know, I was like, oh, no, they named them after, they named them after narcotics, you know. Anyway, but yes, yeah, Speedball 1, Speedball 2, you know, simply because they're Steve Ditko. There's this Ditko, so I got them. And then I did grab this. This is probably my second or third copy of this. It is the first print, New Warriors number 1. I got a funny feeling about this. I'm, I'm real serious about this New Warriors and the first appearance and all that stuff. And for some reason, I feel like one day this book is going to kind of blow up in some trendy way. I don't know why. All right. So uh, the whole reason I went to um, comic book shop is that on Facebook, the guy who owns the comic book shop said he's giving away posters. And I was trying to grab some things. A few weeks ago, I get, I'll get a poster every now and then. So here's some of the posters I was able to grab and I went in there. He got them for free. I ended up getting a ton. Um, I'll go through these real quick. But here's the Jim Lee. Back up here. Make sure you see these. So, there's the Watch Before Watchman poster with all the Jim Lee, kind of the usual suspect poses. So, you know, it's got more stuff on there. I might, I, actually, I might end up cutting that up so I can fit it with the rest of them. Uh, because you know, it's got all the credits on the bottom. So, uh, I'm real happy to get this Zero Hour with the Trinity on it. Zero month, zero hour. Good God, zero month from September of last year. Okay, really happy to get this one because I've been telling him to hold it for me if he ever gets rid of it. It's the uh, Dead Boy Detectives. Another big one I got, I was kind of excited to see this one uh, because I just love Jay Lee's art, but the Batman and Superman promo, Jay Lee's art. And I tell you what, man, seeing Jay Lee's art uh, this big, being able to see all the details and stuff is very cool. Uh, I don't know if I want to keep this one or not, but I went ahead and grabbed it. I mean, they've all got, uh, they still got the tape on it where he had it taped up to the walls. And, uh, Super Jim Lee Superman Unchained promo poster. This thing is huge. Okay. And he said he's not allowed to sell these guys. So if you got a comic book shop that is selling the posters and stuff like that, the uh, all this um, promotional material, they're not allowed to sell it. He had to check on what he could do with it before he started giving away because he can't sell it. Uh, no, they're no, no, uh, none of them are supposed to be able to sell it. And, these, and then these were really cool. I spotted these last week. I mean, I kind of dug them out for them. I don't, even, I, don't, I don't think he really remembered they were there. But I grabbed these. These are for the uh, Zero Month uh, last year. There's the Flash. These are brand new. He never put these up. Aquaman. Wonder Woman. Batman. And Superman. So I'm definitely going to do something with those. The white covers against, you know, I'm going to have to put something, frame them or something where they get to kind of pop. All right, guys. Well, that's the rest of the February haul, the VHS tapes, the posters, the comic books, and uh, some indoor heating right over here. And this thing is, this thing, putting that extra candle in there is making a bit of a difference. So I'll keep an eye on this. And uh, 
you know, might have some fun with that. All right. Later, guys.